good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Mohit. Um, I work at Red Hat. I'm a senior software engineer there, and I'm based out of India. So today, the topic we are focusing mostly on how to integrate the OpenShift integration with Visual Studio Code. Uh, as a normal developer, we have an idea to uh, integrate different IDEs, different command line integrations, and work with every other terminals inside our development scenarios. So as a normal developer, if I need to work on Kubernetes or say I need to work on OpenShift, I need to memorize a lot of commands and I have to work them on the different CLIs. And then again, I have to say deploy a Java application onto that OpenShift instance. I need to go ahead and code uh, my Java scenarios in a, any ID and then I have to deploy it back to the OpenShift cluster. So it's a to and fro scenario. So in this talk, I will be explaining that how to integrate this seamless experience for a developer. Everything can be directly done and integrated using a VS Code editor. So say you have a, a scratch VS Code editor. Uh, VS Code editor is a basically from Microsoft and it's open source. So you just install a VS Code editor, nothing is there. And from Red Hat, uh, we have developed an extension which basically integrates OpenShift into it. So you go to a Visual Studio Marketplace you download that extension and you start working onto it. So basically today my talk will be more on the demo side that how things are working and less on the slides. So let's move ahead. So what problem are we going to solve here, right? So there is a scenario for a developer that, okay, it works on my machine, but it's not working on your scenario. Then how we uh, tackle it? So when everything is on the cloud, you know, okay, how if something is not working for you, it's not working for others because it's already there. So we are targeting, uh, so solving that. So now for OpenShift, we have different clusters. Now one cluster can perform different operations. So we have a cluster which does a uh, game scenario which has a backend on MongoDB and a front end on, say, uh, any web application, Angular, React, whatever it is. We have a different cluster which caters to Node and other cluster which caters to Java or, say, Go or Ruby or Python, whatever you have. So all those clusters can be seamlessly integrated at one place so the developer need not worry about what clusters is present at what scenario. And now after deploying those changes, now we make other uh, changes into the code, we merge different PRs, we add the uh, fix different issues. Now how to deploy those changes quickly to the uh, uh, OpenShift instance? This extension will help you do that with one push and whatever push is there, you can just watch the changes and that will be uh, giving you all the logs directly into your editor. You do not go to a different command line to see what are the logs, what is failing, how, how the Jenkins is reacting to those logs. So everything at one place. So uh, uh, what OpenShift solution provides is you can have a, say, s 2 a image basically from a base image. So that can be a Java, that can be a node, any application which you want. That can be from your local or, say, uh, a uh, workspace folder which is there or even any code which is deployed on your GitHub. So directly fetch that code, uh, deploy onto your OpenShift instance, make changes, push that code and everything is deployed at the end. And the last one is even you can do it from any say, you have a tar file which does all these scenarios. So you need not worry about do I have a source image or do I have a Git repository. Even if you have a tar file to it, just fetch that to it and that cluster will be up and everything will be running. So now from uh, Red Hat has different extensions for VS Code. So this one is basically OpenShift connector and this is available at Marketplace and I will be showing you how this works. The second extension which we have is basically an extension pack. That extension pack does is you have this OpenShift connector, you have different Java debuggers, you have different Maven plugins and those basically get integrated into it. So you, say you want to do a Spring Boot application from scratch to end. So everything can be done just installing that extension and moving forward. So this is the scenario how things are. You write your code in VS Code, whichever language you prefer. You deploy that uh, into OpenShift using the extension. Now once that code is deployed, whatever changes you make, whatever uh, scenarios are there, just do a push and those changes will be automatically redeployed to that cluster. So for this, we are using a local instance of OpenShift. So right now we are using Minishift, which is uh, running a, a local OpenShift cluster that is open source. And even we support the dedicated OpenShift uh, premises, which can be there. The second is our OC uh, CLI tool. And the third one is uh, uh, OpenShift do tool, which basically is at the back end, which does all those operations. VS Code is the front layer, which uh, performs all the operation, but the, at the back end we have uh, 
open shift do tool which performs all those push watch the log changes whatever cluster is there you need to describe the cluster what type of cluster is there so everything on that so let's go ahead and uh, do a quick demo Right now, I'll directly go to how the uh, different linking between the service and component works so that later on I can explain that how things are and how seamless this experience can be. So I'll just move the recording a bit ahead. So uh, if you see, this is a Git repository for a front-end application. So I will use this Git repository to create my component. I am not using a source image. I am not using a tar file. As I mentioned earlier, these are different scenarios. So right now, I am using a, this Git repository to create the front-end. The idea behind this game is to have a Node.js front-end, which is, is using this open source phaser JavaScript on game engine and the Spring Boot backend application, which uses the Red Hat OpenShift Java API to connect with Kubernetes and OpenShift. The backend service written in Spring Boot uh, lists all the platform objects which we have running in our project. And the goal of the game is to shoot them and destroy them. Those objects can be different build configs, different pods, deployment configs, services, routes. And as we can see when we uh, end this demo. So let's move back to VS Code and uh, go ahead and create a component for Spring Boot. For that, I have this Git repository present in my local workspace. So go to the terminal and we. So now the front end was created using a Git repository. Now the back end will be created from my local workspace. So right now I'm demoing different uh, ways you can do it. Even you can uh, have this repository and GitHub and just clone it and make it working uh, as a component in your service. But right now I'm just showing it from uh, my local Code workspace. And I built the binary for it. So NVN mean package. So this should start the build. So as you can see, I need not switch any different CLIs on any other instance to the, this. From my workspace, everything is done directly from VS Code. So you see the build is success. We have got that uh, jar file. So let's go back to the OpenShift extension. In my application, I go ahead and I create new component. So there are three different ways to create components. One can be directly used using a Git repository. One can be used using a binary file, and one can be used from the local workspace. So right now, as we have already created a binary file, so let's go ahead and use that. So once we select that, it asks us to select this binary. So we go to the target folder, and we see this jar is already there. We select that jar, and we say, OK. So now we need to uh, name the component. So we name it Wild West Backend. What is the component type? So it's a Spring Boot application. So we select Java. So uh, now when you see these are the different component types. So when I uh, started a cluster, I show you there. You can list the components. So you can list the services which are there. So these component types are basically what is uh, enabled in your cluster. So some clusters will have many component types. Some of the cluster will have none component types. So dependent upon your cluster and its environment, these things will be listed down. So for my instance, I have all, all the components being installed already into my local Minishift instance. So that is why it showed me a pop-up mentioning that I can select a Spring Boot, I can select a Node, I can select any other component type. We select latest for the component type version. And now you can see uh, the component wild west is successfully created. So if you see here, this component is already created. So the next thing is to create a front-end application, which is in Node.js. So we go back to this repository, and we just clone the Git. We go to the application. We again do a new component. This time, we'll be directly using the Git repository. If this repository already there in my local workspace, I can also use that. But for this demo, we are using Git repository. We paste the URL. We name it Wild West. 
front end. And this is a Node.js application, so Node.js, the type of, let's select latest for the component type. And now it asks us, do you want to clone the Git repository for the created component? So for this demo, we will say no. And as soon as uh, the component is great getting started, uh, you can see whatever changes which are needed for the push is there on the terminal. So we did not switch to uh, the OpenShift console, go to the application, see the deployment configs and see what builds are running, what are the steps which have been performed. So all the logs can be directly seen on the VS Code terminal and whatever changes we want to do, we can do parallelly in the workspace and the build will be running. So whatever deployment is there. So now let's uh, wait for the build to finish so that we can link these the two terminal components terminal. and see the game working. So now you can see this component is created on port this and is this is set as an active component. So now as we have two different components here running, let's go ahead and describe this component. So here if you see, uh, there are different scenarios which are listed. So you can describe that component, you can see the logs which are running, you can even uh, create a URL for that, basically creating a route for that component and even uh, making those changes you can push, you can watch and even open that say if you have a uh, node, uh, just a web interface, simple web interface, uh, you can just directly open that into a browser. So everything basically from a developer perspective is done directly inside this editor and whatever OpenShift scenarios you need to cover can be done through this. This is basically the front end component. So once we describe that, we can see this is the component is of type Node.js and this is the Git repository source. And when we describe the backend component, that basically tells us it's a Java component with sources directly taken from the binary file. So whatever uh, information we need for that component on an application can be directly done from the UI itself. So now the next step is to link these two components together. So we go ahead and do link component. So as we all only have one X different component, so the pop-up basically lists us, okay, we, do we need to list, uh, link the wildbase backend? So we select this, we want to link this. And now we have to select which port are we linking this. So the UI here is pretty smart here so that if you have say multiple services running or multiple components running and if you want to link one component, uh, it will uh, figure out that okay, which component needs to be linked to that or which service needs to be linked to that. So that the developer need not worry okay, what type of service has to be integrated there. We select port 8080, front end. So now after this, uh, the linking between the uh, back end and the front end is done, let's move to see how the game basically develops. So now an application in the browser. So for that, we need to create a route. So once we go and uh, open that in the browser, uh, VS Code asks us to create the route automatically and it will open the browser. The other way is to directly create a URL from here and then open it in browser. So we'll directly go ahead and to open in browser. It asks that uh, there is no route created. Should we go ahead and create it? We say yes. Once the route is created, the application will definitely open in the browser. And you can see now the front end and the back end are linked. And this is the game which loads. Now the user can play this game and click on this. This is how the so uh, basically this uh, this game is basically shooting all those pods or all those routes which you have into your service. So the front end is basically the component which we had and the back end is basically at the meantime creating those routes and meantime whatever service you are get, uh, killing, those are getting into the back end and uh, being done uh, synchronously. So uh, this basically gives you an example that how you can integrate different front end and back end application, do some changes, deploy it on OpenShift within few minutes and everything is up and running directly from your editor. And this uh, is basically there. is so the we have experience created a basic which you want to, to for the this, developers. All the changes from the OpenShift extension. So the only thing you need to do is just go install VS Code, go to the marketplace, and uh, install that extension, and that's it. And this is for developers who are writing and say, I'm a Java developer and I want to code in Java. 
uh, it works for me. But if say someone else is a developer who is very fluent in Node, it works um, for him the seamless way. And in the future, we are also supporting different languages like Go, Ruby, Python. Everything which is out of the box will be supported directly with this extension. So it is nothing specific to a language. It is just specific to whatever the developer prefers and wants to integrate that with the OpenShift instance. So uh, this is it for the uh, demo. If you have any questions, any curiosity for that, uh, let me know. So this is the GitHub link for the uh, Odoo tool which, are, which we are using at the back end and this is for the uh, link for the marketplace where this is uh, OpenShift Connect is installed there. So pretty easy experience which you want to give to the developers because things are changing pretty quickly and everyone wants to integrate things with their OpenShift or Cube clusters. So this is how Red Hat is uh, helping the developers onto that. So. I have any question, yeah? Uh, what is my role to maintain the static uh, static process in this group? Um, where do we do the QM part and the Cubic part? Is it kind of do I have a open shift part or do I require the environment over here? And then how can we go across the data? So what would be the good procedure to kind of maneuver changes to the environment in the interest of the data? Yeah. So uh, the question he has is, uh, if we make any changes to my backend or say my Java application, how Odoo does that and how VS Code implements it? So uh, right now your Java component created is basically a component, right? Whatever changes you make to an editor, it automatically saves and it automatically uh, it does a new push and those push are automatically being uh, done at the backend. So as a developer, you need not worry that you need to again get a tar file and again do a deployment that push will automatically be uh, running at the back end. So there is a web page generator and I choose to... Yeah, that image has, th yeah. Right yeah, that image has that capability to, uh, uh, whatever changes are there, it, it looks at the watch, and as soon as there's a change, it uh, runs a new build, and that build again will be integrated to that front end and things will move. Okay. Yeah, new push is always there whenever you make some changes at the back end or even in the front end. Yeah, basically uh, that scenario, you have say 0 0.1 jar, whenever when you new push, that jar is replaced by the new one and that things work. And that's the local Yeah, so uh, whatever changes there in the uh, backend side from the component side or service side is done by Odo. And VS Code does uh, integrate that from the uh, developer perspective. So uh, your question is, uh, does it support only container-based or you can do a VM-based deployment also on that? So uh, I would say if you have your uh, application or any scenario on your OpenShift cluster, if it is running onto that cluster, this extension will support that. Yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you.